So I've got another video here for you, which relates, of course, to our figurative language exploration. And I usually try to shoot for five minutes or less, but I've been failing on that so often that I figure I give up. What I'm going to do is go for something closer to 12 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. And that's because I have a video within the video and because I'm putting together three terms at once. They are to the side of my head. Onomatopoeia, alliteration, and I'm not going to say that one wrong. I get into some serious trouble if I mispronounce this. Okay, I'm going to look this up on Google. Hold on. How do we say this guy? Huh. Assonance. Did I hear that right? Assonance. Well, indeed I did. Yes, the correct way to pronounce this last one is assonance. Your English teachers love to pronounce it as assonance, but they do that for the same reason they won't say this word correctly. Potato, potato, that's what we're talking about. Let me get back on track. So there are three terms that kind of relate to each other in a way because they're really about creating some type of mood or beat or even like a type of music to the things that we read. Onomatopoeia, alliteration, and assonance. Onomatopoeia, the simplest way to think about it is sound effects. Don't worry if you don't remember that because this is all going to be explained in another video right inside and after my own. Alliteration, well, that's when we use the beginnings of words and we repeat them. So I'm going to show you a list of things to, to explain what I mean by that. And then a sonance is a repetition of vowel sounds that can show up in words that are really kind of close by in the text. So let's get a look at that. I have here a list of things. They are all businesses. Dunkin' Donuts. I love Dunkin' Donuts. Notice the repetition of the letter D. D, D, Dunkin' and Donuts. That's not an accident. They do these things because they're catchy and memorable. Best Buy, American Airlines, Coca-Cola, PayPal. Oh, Bed Bath & Beyond had to go past everybody. They've got three uh, letters repeated here. Bed, Bath & Beyond, the B, B, B. That's what they're going for. How about YouTube, right? Okay. When you hear a repetition of a sound, that generally is done purposefully, especially when we're talking about poetry. How about candy? We've got juicy fruits. You hear the ooh sound in there? Ju and fru. That's in there. That's what we call assonance. Uh, Kit Kat, M&M's, peppermint patty. Okay. Peppermint patty, example again of alliteration. TV shows. Uh, there were these famous characters, uh, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> pretty, pretty funny guys. Uh, there's, of course, a Brady Bunch you might know. I'm betting we all know Sesame Street, and I'm sure we all know Squ uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. You're getting that repetition of that S sound here. Um, how about uh, sports teams? The Buffalo Bills or the Cleveland Cavaliers or the Pittsburgh Pirates? All alliteration. Again, beginning sound is being repeated. Okay, what else can I show you? Oh, we've got Harry Potter. Those of you that read that, there's a lot of uh, alliteration being used by the author in that book. So again, it's done because it's sticky in our heads, it's memorable, it creates a nice sense of mood, and maybe even has a musical quality to it. Let's talk about onomatopoeia. So you see this big uh, picture here with all these crazy uh, words all over it. They basically look like sound effects because that's what they are. Onomatopoeia is an attempt to capture the sound of something. And that's what we're often talking about with this. It's imitating something that you can hear out in nature. So for example, the bird swooshed by me or whooshed by me. You're trying to capture that sound. I mean, we can't do it perfectly with our mouths. So whoosh is the closest we could come to that. And that's an example of onomatopoeia. Something explodes, kaboom or boom. It depends on what the sound is of that explosion. We try to capture it some way with some type of, you know, written representation. Moo, the sound of a cow, of course. We've got all kinds of onomatopoeia for animals because they pretty much just make a lot of sounds, not many words. And then we've got the buzzing bee flew away. You're getting the idea that it is about a sound effect for the most part. Let me get into this video now where these two other people do a much better job than I do of explaining these three terms, alliteration, assonance, and onomatopoeia. Sorry, it's going to get a little noisy.
in the greatest challenge of my career, will I be able to write the word onomatopoeia? You can do it. I get it? You did it. Yes. yes. This is one of my least favorite words to spell, but one of my favorite things to talk about. Because what we're talking about today is alliteration, assonance, and onomatopoeia. Uh, and these are all words that are related to the way language sounds. But let's begin with alliteration. Rosie, what is alliteration? Alliteration is when a series of words all start with the same consonant. So what's a good example of that? Robert Park swam swiftly, surely, and straight ahead. So you can see that all these pink words here, swam, swiftly, surely, straight ahead, all begin with S. Right. And so this is why we call this alliteration, because S is a consonant, and all of these things share a similar consonant sound. Now, I want to contrast that with assonance, which is what, Rosie? Assonance is when a series of words all start with the same vowel. Althea abolished all anguish. So you can see all of these words in this sentence in the same vowel neighborhood. Right. But my favorite of all is onomatopoeia. which comes from Greek, uh, and it, it basically means like uh, onom, onomat means a name resulting from doing. So really, this is this word just means, sounds like what it does. So any, really anything that you would conceive of as a, a sound effect, like a word that comes from a sound effect, uh, so the bees buzzed for example. Like, what is what is buzzed? Well, it's the sound that a bee makes. It's it's what it does. That, that word is derived from the bzzz sound. But that's not the only example of onomatopoeia. We have compiled here a list. What we got, Rosie? Okay, we've got splat. It's kind of the sound of something hitting pavement. <laughs> yep. We've got clang which is like the clanging of a bell. We've got bang, which sounds like something exploding. Whoosh, which sounds like air or wind. Beep. Yeah. Beep sounds like a beeping. I mean. <laughs> like that is literally, so if you, if you are trying to summon up the actual sound of a thing and transcribe it and use it as a noun or verb you're you're using onomatopoeia i know it's a terrifying looking word right like no one word should have this many vowels in front of the other i get it i get it uh i'm i'm terrified of spelling this word but i, I managed to do it apparently and now you know what it means and that should take away some of its scariness and and impart to you some of its power because here at Khan Academy, we want you to have the power to harness language. And specifically, today, to harness these three um, different language styles. So alliteration, repeating the same consonant a bunch of times in a row. So swimming swiftly, surely, and straight ahead. Assonance, where you repeat the same vowel, like abolished all anguish. And onomatopoeia, where you make a word that sounds like what the word's effect is. So the bees buzzed, the pudding cup went splat, the the uh, the boxing bell fell to the floor with a clang, the firework went off with a bang, uh, a flight of bats whooshed past my head, <laughs> and the robot, the little baby robot, beeped at me insistently. I like those. How can a robot be a baby? I think it's just the size, Okay, right? sure. Not the age? Yeah, that's legitimate. <laughs> so, okay, so I guess the question is, now you know what these things are, but Rosie, why would a person want to use these techniques in language, whether written or spoken? That's a great question. Writers can use some of these techniques to basically use the sound to get across a pattern. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're, if you're going to use words that all sound the same at the beginning with a bunch of S's, that kind of 
could potentially build some momentum to your sentence. Like it kind of makes the reader sit up and pay attention too. It's like, oh, this is an interesting pattern. So that could be one reason why a writer might use, for example, alliteration. Yeah, so it's 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 a way to express a pattern and to build on what you were saying, you can also, it's just a good attention grabber. And it's also useful for its own sake, just as a as a as a technique for for writing prose or poetry. Like it's something you it's a useful property of language to be able to sometimes access. Right. And a good example with automatopoeia, onomatopoeia is you're really capturing you're really capturing the sound so the reader is really able to be immersed in the experience even more fully. You can, you can hear the sounds that are happening, the buzzing of the bees, or yeah, it just puts you even more in the story that the writer is telling. That's why you would want to learn how to use assonance, alliteration, and onomatopoeia. You can learn anything. David out. Rosie out. Okay, so I thought that was a pretty good video uh, overall. I know it took a little bit of time for them to get that out there, um, but as um, it was explained by Rosie in the video, one of the reasons that we use uh, onomatopoeia and these other devices is because it does capture a moment so clearly. It can put you right there. You know, when you talk about a gurgling brook, that's the sound the brook is making as the water goes over small little stones. That's what you're trying to capture, and you want somebody to be there too. Anyway, you've got the three words down here, alliteration, assonance, and onomatopoeia. I hope you have some idea of what these things are because you're going to start seeing them everywhere you look, not just on um, you know, business, uh, uh, the front of businesses, but also in your regular reading and most certainly in poetry.